Hi. In this lecture, I want to talk a little bit about uh, gender bias and stereotypes, uh, particularly focused on females in children's picture books. Again, we've looked uh, so much at the whole idea of mirrors and windows uh, in this class thus far, right? And the idea of being reflected and how important that is. And also uh, the windows aspect and, and looking out and understanding that, that other people, people different from you, really have uh, uh, worth and are, are to be admired and embraced and all of that too. So when we look at gender uh, in terms of representation, in children's books and picture books I'm kind of focusing on right now, we see that still here in 2023 that there's a lot of disparity, a lot of inequity in terms of reflecting females, whether they're animals or human beings or cars or trucks or monsters or whatever, that 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 girls and, and women are really uh, uh, much less reflected. And so I wanted to talk about that a little bit today. So how the tale is told, right? My favorite quote um, is paramount. And when females are represented in diminished capacities or not at all, the story is clearly told indeed. So not represented, not enough windows, not enough mirrors. We realize the value, the worth of females in our society through our media, through and the media we're talking about here, our picture books. Lots of studies have uh, uh, been done throughout the years. This one was, uh, I think, like in the late 70s. So gotten a, got a little better when um, this author was investigating this stuff in 2011 uh, that we, to see, we see more representation of females in picture books um, of late. But a lot of times the case has been that they're not the ones that are carrying the story or you know, they're on the, the front page or on the title. They're the, the main protagonist. It's just not happening, right? It doesn't happen still. It's gotten better, and we see that all around us. But it's th still a real disparity in terms of who gets the stories, who gets to tell the stories, who gets to save the world in essence, right? And it's mostly the male character. And if you grew up in the United States and uh, have learned some of the nursery rhymes, and I don't even know if people who grew up in your generation even get them that much, but, but they're still kind of around. And there was one, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, which I think is his head. And Jill came tumbling after. So I love this quote. Gendered expectation patterns are well learned from the time children are very young. Jill is a follower from the time she's immortalized by Mother Goose. she like, why did she fall down? Why'd she have to fall down? Jack fell down. Why'd she have to fall down? Don't follow Jack, Jill. And we, I've talked about this in the uh, our, my first lecture with you, is that by the time kids are five, they're hardwired to, to um, accept stereotypes, to accept the idea of what you're supposed to do if you identify as a female or if you identify as a male. It's like in there. It's in, entrenched. It's locked in. It's signed, sealed, and delivered, right? And it's hard to undo. And, and our picture books, our media, conveys that boys get to do cooler things than girls. Another way to really understand your worth and, and to really soak in those stereotypes is through language, right? It's just it's how we gather our information, and it's through children's books. And, and you don't have to know how to read to, to get, get those messages because you're going to have plenty of adults who will read these books out loud to you until you can read. And we, when we look at some of the, the just basic stereotypes of of looking at things. I mean, dogs, right? Dogs are always uh, portrayed as he's, animals, he's, he, 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 and that's true in picture books as well. Uh, the superhero, uh, Supergirl, look at that superhero. She is not a girl, right? Mr. Mountain, so my preschoolers do it all the time. They put a mister in front of something and that gives it more power. I mean, I can't even think of any examples to tell you the truth. But they say stuff and it's just kind of, oh, no, please stop. And occupational titles, we're getting better with that, a lot better. But but firefighters are still referred to as firemen sometimes, right? And it's confusing because kids know the difference. And they, they get these messages, which makes it even more complicated. 
So I just recall, it was years ago when I was at a preschool, it wasn't mine, or visiting, I don't remember why, but they had some firefighters there, which is totally cool because fire, firefighters rock. They got so much great stuff to share. Their, their I was going to say outfits, <laughs> their uniforms, their, their, their red truck, all the hoses and helmets and stuff. It's awesome. And there was a firefighter there that was a woman, and she was kept referring to herself as a fireman because they were all using fireman. And this the, the kids are confused. This one girl's like kind of in tears about it. We talked. To, I talked to her about it. She's like, why is she calling herself a man? So those things matter to kids. I can't seem to get this link when I'm trying to get record my lecture to you, so I'm going to put it in. And it's just a quick, like, two-minute thing about – the expectations of, of who who is a doctor, who's a firefighter, who's a jet jet pilot flyer. It's just really cute. So just check it out. I'll, I'll link it for sure. When we look at occupational tit titles, when we took it, look at people that workers, workers in our community, right? Guess what? They're gender neutral terms for all of them. So this top one, comedian, with two ends, that means it's female for some reason. I don't even get that one. But the real word is comedian, so why can't we say female comedian, male comedian? Not tough, right? Chairman. That has actually gotten better at being um, uh, used in a gender-neutral format. So you can just can say chair, hello, or people say chairperson. I mean, I'm going to just keep it brief, chair. Pretty easy to do. Mankind, gotten a little better there, but still all over the place. One giant step for mankind, you know, so it's gotten better, but I just saw it. I just saw it yesterday in something. I can't even remember. A brand new something. And I don't know what it was. And they said mankind. I said, really? I mean, you can say humankind or humanity. It's not hard to do. And so actress, right? Actress is a diminished version of the real word, which is actor. And so you can do female actor if you need to designate or male actor. They do it for the SAG Awards now, the Screen Actors Guild, they say that, right? And they're doing it more, but actresses diminish is less than. It's not the real word. Just like waitress isn't the real word. That's a diminished version of waiter. And so who gets the diminished version? Females do. So we're pretty comfortable with that, right? Maybe it doesn't seem as glamorous, but waitress never was glamorous either. Fisherman's kind of tough. Can anyone think of the gender-neutral term for fisherman? I was really thrown by this one. But it's just fisher or angler because that's what it is. So we can we can change. A male prostitute, they only say male prostitute because the, the default is female prostitute, right? So, so that's like another diss for females. So prostitute, say female or say male. I don't, it's not tough. We can make these changes. And all these in incremental changes add up to the feeling that you are reflected in your society. Trust me on that one. Freshman. I know. It's like, oh, that's okay. Everybody knows it was freshman. And, you know, it can be freshman. It's when, when you're a freshman, it's male or female. But what's wrong with just saying first year? It's been used. There's first year classes. So that's for freshmen. So come on. Because here's the deal. Studies reveal. That gender bias in children's books give boys a sense of entitlement and lowers girls' self-esteem and occupational aspiration. I could show you a pile of those. It is sad. The dearth, meaning the lack of, like, no, nothing representation of female characters teaches both sexes that girls are less worthy than boys. Children's literature provides girls and boys with standards of masculinity and femininity and present a basic model for understanding oneself and others. So if you identify as a girl, you look at this stuff, then there's the girl things. And likewise for boys. I'm not saying it's great for boys because it's not. So it's improved. It's, it keeps improving, but not that fast, right? And the deal is there's still a lot more male characters and they're doing a lot more cool things than female characters in picture books, hands down. Um, Caldecott is is a really huge Caldecott award books. It's been around for a million years, and the the deal is it's really important. Like beautifully illustrated books are um, awarded the Caldecott medal. So it's like it's like the Oscar. Is it? Oh, Grace, Grace, um, Grace. What's her? What, Lynn. God, I can't remember her last name. The the one the one about that she wanted Grace Lynn who wanted to be. Um, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, right? So, so 
she's saying that she got a Caldecott awarded book and it's like the Oscar. So, so it's the bit, it's a big deal. And it again shows that there's less characters uh, that are female that are doing cool things and, and it just goes on and on. So those studies continue. So on the bottom, I, you know, also we don't, there in general studies, they don't like for Caldecott, they let's, let's decide who is re being reflected besides whether they're ma male or female. Let's look at what, what the representations of color representation. So up till 2020, which was just right around the corner, Caldecott Award uh, and Honor Award books for females were uh, of, of color. So two uh, black African-American, one Chinese-American, one American Indian, no tribe specified. Boom, bad. It's bad. And this is kind of a quick, short, um, kind of cute video which I can't seem to link right now, I apologize, that will um, kind of give you an idea of, like, if you look at a, a book sh couple bookshelves crammed with books, start weeding them out when we're looking at representation for females, there's not going to be that many left. Given the gender misrepresentation in children's literature, looking at all the stuff, all the messages that all, the, all these kids get, is that it, and it's still true today that men fix things. I mean, there's even a book that, um, boys fix things girls need things that girls need things to be fixed mm. bad message animals are male they're just male they're male women's rarely have jobs except for the in the, they're in the kitchen and fathers make the dishes decisions or boys do and women serve food I mean really they do they serve food <laughs> but they don't ever eat it and that all girls have dolls okay so here's a great book in David Shannon, I mean, a great book in terms of illustration, and it's when the rain comes down, and so they're talking about all, all sorts of things that are happening when the rain comes down. And there's like there's about four female figures, figures, characters in this this book, and they're just it's all kind of derogatory stuff like this one. Stop all that yelling! Shouted the man's wife. The man's wife. She doesn't even get a name. Come on, love the illustrations though, and this is really true for children's books that have animals that are alive or the what's the anthropomorph anthropomorphism of, that's when they dress in cute clothes right and they talk and they're like real and i love those kind of books but but again research shows that still in books about animals they're mostly male so it's gotten better it's gotten better but a lot of times there's more female characters, but ooh, some of the subtle messages we receive in these. And, and I want to show you one, another David Shannon book. Oh, gosh, I love the idea of this book, and I changed the pronoun so that I can successfully read it in my preschool practice because it's the cutest book ever, and the illustrations just rock. But here's the thing. there's I was excited initially when I saw this book because there's more female characters than usual, Fe more female a animals. Of course, there's in this book there's more males so okay yeah but there's more than usual i thought this is so cool it is such a great book but look at how the females are reflected it doesn't even matter that they're animals they're still gonna get those stereotypes so duck on a bike so this duck lives on this farm with all these other farm animals and all these kids come racing up and on their different kinds of cool bikes and prop them up against the barn and ducks going mm, I bet I could ride that bike. And so that's what this book's about. And that's just awesome. It's so cute in terms of that. So Buck, Buck Duck begins to practice riding a bike because he says, I bet I could ride a bike. And he starts and he goes, this is fun. It's like, wow, what a great idea. He's wobbling around, but he's got it. But so now he's going to ride past all the different animals in the barnyard. What a different story depending on what gender you are. So here's the sheep. And what is she doing? She's saying, oh, then duck, then duck rode past sheep. Hello, sheep, said duck. Bah, says sheep. But what she thought was, he's got to hurt himself if he's not careful. Look at her eyes. I mean, so no risky behavior here for that sheep. But look at the contrast, another animal that duck's riding by. Duck was riding better now. He rode past duck. Hello, Excuse me. He rode past dog. Hello, dog, said duck. Woof, said dog. But what he thought was, that's a mighty neat trick. So what a contrast, right? And I'm not, am I saying that, that, that a female sheep can't be 
be scared sometimes? No. Am I saying that a, a dog has to be all like, oh, yeah, that's so cool. I want to do it too kind of thing. No. But when you get these repeated messages, it's just a bum deal. It's bad. So here's um, Duck riding past horse. Duck pedal a little faster. He rode past horse. Hello, horse, said Duck. <laughs> said horse. But what he thought was, you're still not as fast as I am, Duck. Or... You're still not as fast as me, duck. Great message, right? Like, okay, it's cool. You're doing it, but I'm faster. Contrasted to another animal who happens to be female. Then duck rode past cat. Hello, cat, said duck. Meow, said cat. But what she thought was, I wouldn't waste my time riding a bike. Lousy message. Boom. Contrasted to some kind of fun. Then duck rode past goat. Hello, goat, said duck. Meh said goat but what he thought was i'd like to eat that bike cool funny great compared to duck rang his bell as he ran as he rode towards chicken hello chicken said duck cluck, 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 said Ch i've had lots of practice said chicken but what she thought was watch where you're going duck so again happy ending because they all get on bikes and have a fabulous time but those messages are bad when we're just always, always diminishing the ability, the agency, the funness, the wildness, the powerfulness of females in children's books. And as I said, animals are always mostly referred to as he, right? That's my famous dog, Jupiter. Everyone always calls her a he. And you know what? Can I even tell you this for a while? For a while, I had a big, bright pink collar on her because I was experimenting. And I had a big pink collar on her. And then when I needed to use a leash, like in the woods, I'm passing people all the time because I walk her every day. We go out for walks every day, just about. And I had a purple, big, bright purple leash, pink, bright collar. And she still was referred to as a he. So come on now. So the deal is that when you're referring to an animal, you can say it and you're always right. So that's what I tell my preschoolers. And it works. I say, like, who doesn't want to be right? So they, they're pretty good at getting used to the idea of saying it, except for they get pounded with messages all the time from outside of my preschool world and go, go back to the he, she. But I say, yeah, you can say it. I say, why are you calling my dog a he? Do you see a penis? Can you see a penis? Because that's a good identifier, right? And, you know, I'm not being trying to be smug about it, but, like, where's your clue? Where's your clue that that is a he? So you can't use it for people, right? Because that's disrespectful. But now we've got something going on with pronouns that's so cool with the they thing. And, and a lot of people are just oh, refusing the they, the they thing. And looks what's happening in Florida. They're just like slamming down anything to do with transgender uh, youth and, and the ability to just feel good about your pronouns, feel good about your identity, your bodies, right? So... So the deal is that, as we know, that some people on the gender continuum, that whole little line of way over here is male and way over here is female, there's all that in-betweenness and there that you can use specific pronouns and they really works if you don't want to do the he and she thing. What's the big deal about that? And why is it important? Again, it's the whole idea that, like my dog, you don't know if my dog's a he or she by looking at her. So you can't always know what someone's pronouns are, the human beings, that is, right, by looking at them. And you can find out respectfully and do it. And if you refer to someone incorrectly, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't. As some of you maybe, I mean, more you all know, are more tuned, in this, tuned into this than my generation. It's not happening there. And then this is really important when we look at, at – our, our white centric society and then our less than society that if you if you're in power you don't have to worry about your pronouns right and this could be a long conversation but just an example of of how we can change things and 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 pronouns and and terms that like fishermen you know and mankind those aren't gender neutral and Neither is this. Guys is not gender neutral. So 
here's a quote. I'm just going to say, I'm not saying that people who use you guys have bad intentions, but think of the consequences. All those man words said many times a day by millions of people every day, cumulatively re reinforce the message that men and boys are the standard and that women and girls are, the, are to be subsumed, swallowed up, just folded into the male coat category and it's all okay. Because my preschoolers, use this term all the time because it's used everywhere. And when we talk about it and I talk to my girls, they don't think it's gender neutral. They don't think it is. Four-year-olds don't. Four-year-olds don't think it's they Guys are boys. They are. So, okay, enough on that subject. But another thing that bothers me and why I'm saying this is that there's a preponderance. I never use that word. There's a ton. Uh, there's mostly still books that the boys or the males get to do cool things and the girls don't as often get to do cool cool things it's you know we're having girl power stuff it's going on it's definitely going on but still not you know equitable it's not balanced yet so what do you think might bug me about this book now that you know that i'm cuckoo <laughs> which then that diminishes what i'm saying so the, the deal with this book is boys can be in the lead they can be in the front of the skateboard a girl can be hanging on to a boy. I think she could just hang on to the skateboard and just kind of take care of herself. A girl can have kind of a cute little smile. But if this is just reproduced, replicated, you just, that's, if that's the, per, oh, I mean, I was just going to use preponderance again. Not yet. Gosh, what are you talking about? But if that's just the, what's out there, if those are the messages out there all the time, then it's wrong. And it's wrong. That's what I'm talking about. So we need to balance when girls get to be in the front, and of color too, by the way, when they get to solve the problems and save the world, we need more of that. We don't need to just see that as like, oh, wow, look it, there is a girl saving the world. How unusual. Just one more story. Actually, yeah, <coughs> this is about the last, almost the last story. So if you grew up in the United States and you were in schools that had libraries, how exciting was that? <coughs> Excuse me. It was so thrilling. It's just so thrilling. I, you know, subbed a lot in the the uh, elementary schools up here before I started my preschool. And it was so exciting to be, like, when I was subbing in the library. It was just so cute because kids love, like, they get to come in and they get to check out a book for free and take it home for a week. How exciting is that? And then they get to come back and do it again. So, and this is an article that I used to assign where there was a story in it that that these kindergartens for the very first time were going into the library and getting a book. I mean, for some that hadn't even been in the library or, you know, just didn't have one nearby or wasn't handy. So this was a big deal. So they're all getting their books and it's just all exciting and it's just such a fabulous atmosphere. And then they get in line to go back to uh, their classroom because you got to line up. And then you hear in the back two boys saying to another boy, ooh, that's a girl's book. And so he had um, the Walt Disney version of um, Beauty and the Beast. And and it's like, oh, it just makes me sad even talking about it, even reading I was sad. So he just hung his head, and, and they were laughing at him. He, so just he quietly just – he didn't have very much time. He didn't get to have the luxury of, like, pouring over books. Is this the one I want? He just put that book down and went and grabbed something, like probably with a truck on it or something. And it, how sad is that, right? Because the thing is – Boys' rejections of things feminine is documented by researchers who su suggest that early in life, boys realize that things associated with girls and women are devalued by society and therefore, or thus, that it is important that they define themselves against those things. So yeah, ooh, that's a girl's book. Or, ooh, you throw like a girl. Ooh, pink is, a, pink is an awful color, right? It's just so sad, right? It's so sad. I'll link this video too, just in case you want to see it. It's a sad situation. There's my little pal, Gabriel, one of my preschoolers, who loved to wear Hello Kitty um, nightgowns when he was three and four. And his mother called and said, I'm a little worried because he's still wearing him now in kindergarten that he's in school. And the thing she was worried about was that he had a brother um, that was also the same age, an adopted brother, that um, just ridiculed Gabriel for wearing those Hello Kitty nightgowns. But think about it. Boys don't get to wear that kind of fun, swishy things that, in just bright, wonderful colors. You can swish in that little nightgown, right? 
And so she said, do you have any recommendations? And I said, yeah, here's what I want you to do. You have Gabriel's brother dress up in the hat. Let him try on the nightgown, which he'll do because they were cool kids to, in to that respect. And so his brother tried on, Noah, his brother t- tried on the nightgown. And I said, take a picture of it. Take, take a picture of it and then tell, then threaten Noah and say, if you say anything about that, no, that Gabriel wears nightgowns at home, then I'm going to show all your friends this picture. That's pretty radical, right? But that's what you kind of have to do. Now, I'm not even going to go into the whole idea of like, what does this mean? Is Gabriel gay? And, you know, by the way, he's older now, so I'm not even going to tell you because that's, that's not even the point here. But the idea that those are the kind of circumstances that girls' things are less than than boys diminished and Gabriel couldn't even wear his Hello Kitty nightgown with ease. It's a sad situation because, again, Girls' things aren't as important or as interesting as boys' things. So I just want to read this quote. As things stand in our storytelling culture, the vast majority of stories that we admire, talk about, give prizes to, throw money at, and adapt into movies are about guys, are, excuse me, are by guys, about guys doing guy stuff. This means that girls get a lot of practice stepping into the shoes of male main characters, but boys have fewer chances to do the same for girls, right? And that's so true. And so what it's saying is that boy, it's a, why it's a bum deal for boys and males is they don't get to 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 step in the shoes of females and um, of females in general with, when it comes to like beautiful stories, right? So we still have like the Oscars are on last night, and we're still having to. Um, oh my god I was going to use preponderance again I never used that word I was trying to use it three times we still have what's weighted there's so many more stories about about men in, in movies and, and boys in movies and, and you just look at the stats it just goes on and on that just goes on and on right and, and so it's it's that's the deal that we need the windows for our girls but we need the mirrors for our boys when it comes to girl stories, when it comes to female stories, we need them. We, everybody needs them. They need this. So how can we help counter racist, sexist, and gender biased messages? Doing, you know it. We got to change the message. Slowly is happening. Too slowly in my eyes, but slowly it's happening. So we need robust, fabulous stories about girls and females for girls and for boys, for males. I love this book. This is Sadie. Can you hear my clock ticking? Wow, it's loud. <laughs> okay, that's all I have to say. Thanks for listening. Um, okay, yeah, I don't need to add anything. Thank you. <laughs>